Hello guys, Blitz. Uh, gonna make a YouTube video regarding something that I saw on Reddit recently, which was that CCNC told everyone not to hit neutral creeps, which I think is very good advice. Uh, I figured I'd further elaborate on that and give you guys a few examples of why it's important to always shove out the lanes. I always say it in my cast, but uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with it. Uh, sorry, the YouTube content is sparse. It's not something I actually enjoy creating, nor does it uh, really net me anything since I, I mean, maybe I do monetize, but I haven't seen a dime of it. So we'll see how limited my motivation gets to create these videos and stuff like that. But um, so in this game, I picked Lena. I was Lena in this game, nine, two, and four. I was playing against uh, Jimmy, I believe, who was playing Leshrac. Uh, at this point in the game, he's five, eleven, and 19. I was playing against some other Underlord player who actually ended up being pretty good. And I kind of wanted to show you like what shoving the lanes is because a lot of people associate the idea of split pushing or ratting with shoving out lanes and they're not entirely dissimilar, but I wanted to kind of show you guys like why this game was so hard for us. So at this point in the game, the score is 24 to 22, two kills in our favor, but we are down 8k gold at just 20 minutes. And part of that is because for the most part, the enemy team... The enemy team more or less just avoided fights and instead focused on shoving out the waves. Uh, let me just pick a random spot on the map. <clears throat> so if you notice Jimmy's playing Leshrac and I really wanted to highlight his play because in this game there was something that hit me and I was thinking to myself and my team were, was thinking like why is it that we are behind? Because it feels as though we're ahead. You know, you've got a Lina that is 11, 2, and 5, who has an unbelievable amount of farm at this point in the game. But it still feels as though we're significantly behind. And it's because while we're farming neutral creeps and while we're, uh, you know, getting the guaranteed farm, you've got a guy like Jimmy who, even though he's died 11 times, is constantly just shoving in the waves and being very aggressive on the map. So they take this bottom fight. Jimmy skips this wave. Now, if you look at the map in this position, this guy is shoving out this top lane because we had just taken a fight near this area. I have to go shove out mid wave because it's eventually gonna get there. And meanwhile, Jimmy, he just skips bottom. Uh, and while I go for the Shadow Blade gank on this Marana, their team is already in position at bottom lane to hit this tower. Uh, and they're gonna do quite a bit of damage to it. I think we actually end up still winning this fight. Uh, yeah, I think we kill this Phantom Lancer which was good for us, but it doesn't feel as though we're getting anything out of this as a result of that. Because if you notice, they kill, they trade back. Uh, somebody pushes out mid, which is the Underlord. Somebody immediately runs towards top to push out that wave. And uh, I'm in a position where my first thought is to go for this. Once I get tracked, I don't feel very comfortable going to this top lane. Meanwhile, this bottom lane is still being shoved in. Somebody eventually has to deal with this mid lane. And so it feels as though at all times they're pressuring three lanes at once by doing little things like that. So I'm, but if you notice me, <coughs> I'm being a fool. I go for the neutral creeps. And yeah, like this and Jimmy at bottom, if you notice, like he's risking his life, but he's not really risking it because as a result, also pushing in the wave, you allow yourself to get more aggressive wards down. Uh, and so from my perspective, it's very hard to ever go anywhere on the map. Because when we do, we only shove out our waves to here and we go to kill somebody, it's impossible for my supports as well to have a game because they simply just can't get wards out. It's very hard for them. And so we're losing out on vision. If you notice, like our vision is limited to this ward right here, which doesn't even see anything. And so our level of comfort on the map is very limited, whereas their level of comfort because of how aggressively they shoved in is very good. And so uh, I go to push out top wave. I go hit neutrals, somebody's pushing out mid wave, but meanwhile, look at Jimmy at bottom. Because we're dealing with the other two waves, he feels very good about pushing out this bottom wave because he knows that there simply can't be anybody to go and gank him. Because you've got one guy pushing out this top wave, you've got one guy, two people pushing out this mid wave. He knows that he is safe on the map as a result. And this is what pushing wave does for you is that it gives you vision, it allows your team to set up vision, it gives you information because you know that if somebody can't be, if somebody's in the top wave, somebody's in the mid wave, you know that they probably aren't gonna be at this bottom area because if his entire team is behind him and three of my teammates go to gank him, we'll just lose the game, especially because we don't have vision set up around this area. Whereas Jimmy's team was able to very aggressively put out vision as a result of all their lane shoving shenanigans 
and it's the benefit of having an invis here on this bounty hunter. Uh, so I go hit some more neutral creeps. I eventually go top. Uh, I've played against Jimmy enough times that I know how he plays. I go to deal with him up at top. We get into this like team fight where uh, once again we kill their Phantom Lancer, but if you notice their Marana at bottom lane is just hitting this tower. Like we're taking this fight and she's just hitting this tower. And normally when you kill a Phantom Lancer at this phase of the game, you feel as though the game is over. You f you kill like a really farmed Phantom Lancer, you're thinking to yourself like, wow, this game is getting a lot easier. But if you notice that bottom lane, uh, this Marana is just kind of suicide pushing out the wave. We do manage to kill her, but during this time, his team just resets up at top again, and they're going to shove out this wave. My team has to deal with bottom. This Monkey King has to be down here. Uh, so by the time we get up top, they're almost going to take the tower, get like half HP. We're going to kill Jimmy once more. This guy gets four staff forward. Very nice. Uh, we're going to kill this guy too. So... If they're good at this point, what they're going to know is that we TP'd to top S5. And uh, my team, one guy showing mid, you know that the rest of the heroes around this area. So their play should be to immediately run bottom. Somebody should just immediately run bottom. This Lushrak has a Bloodstone. I'm going to run into this Marana. Don't think I... Oh, we do kill her. But during this time that we kill her, once again, we're put into a position where this Phantom Lancer has shoved out bottom. And my team has just taken this fight at top. This guy doesn't have a TP. This guy does have a TP. He immediately goes back. I go back. And we want a Roshan, but as a result of this movement, we simply can't. Now they get into an aggressive position once again. Uh, we try chasing out. I try chasing out. And now this sets them up for a lot more opportunities. I personally would have liked it if they went and Roshed. Somebody stayed bottom on their team and then they went and Roshed. And Jimmy once again uh, runs at bottom. And he's in such an aggressive position. I think he hides in here, he pushes in this bottom wave, he skips it. And meanwhile, this Phantom Lancer is taking this top tower and our shrine as a result of this play. We feel at all times stressed because half of us want to run down and kill this guy. But meanwhile, there's this assault up at top. And we do end up killing uh, their Leshrac, but he still doesn't care. Like their goal lead is dwindled a bit, but it still exists. And we're killing cores, keep in mind. We're not killing... Marana's and Bounty Hunters. We're killing this Leshrac 13 times. We've killed this Phantom Lancer three times and it doesn't feel as though we're limiting their farm at all. In fact, it feels as though we're one bad fight away from losing this game. And that's the key here is that when you, when you push out the wave aggressively and you die, it doesn't mean that much because we have to reset the wave all the way around. And that's what we talk about when we focus so much on pushing waves and why uh, there's such an importance on it in things like pro games is because it determines so much of your map movement. If our lanes are in a good spot, it allows us to rush on it. And what it does too for the aggressive team, for the dire team in this case, is it gives them so many chances at winning the game. Because our team has a sick amount of team fight. Like we have an unbelievable amount of team fight. Theirs doesn't. They've got a Marana and a Bounty Hunter, which when it comes to team fight contribution, this guy tracks somebody and then throws around shuriken tosses, and he has to hope that his team wins the fight for him so that he can get some farm. And she has an Aghanim Scepter and a bunch of single target uh, with the Sacred Arrow and Starstorm doesn't really scare anybody at this point because everyone has BKBs or they should. So they're just giving themselves repeated chances of winning because if I mess up at this point, I'm a 15 and 2 Lina, but I feel as though if I die once without buyback, the game just ends because the waves are shoved in at all times and we're not making the same progress. Uh, and so our only play at this point, it feels as though is to just kill them repeatedly. And that's a pretty good way to respond to what they're doing is to pick up items like Silver Edges and Shadow Blades because it allows you to move unseen on the map. It allows you to push past the waves so that you can aggressively find people that are waiting to push out the waves. Uh, that's why I grabbed the Silver Edge this game. I think it's just a very good Lena item. Uh, it has a lot of pickoff potential. You're not, rel you're not uh, relying on the Yule Scepter combo so that he can't get BKB off. Uh, and yeah, and so this game will continue on for quite some time in this manner. And uh, I mean, we keep killing Jimmy, but, you know, 14 deaths in, his team is still winning. I mean, our team is winning by a significant margin, and it doesn't feel as though we're winning by a significant margin. If you notice at bottom, like, we're going to go for this Roshan. At this point, I just tell my team, get the Rosh. The Rax doesn't matter that much. We lose a range Rax. It's whatever. Uh, Lesh Rax shows up top again. The key here is that he has boots to travel, and I don't. 
if I really think about this game, I think I should have pivoted in a boots of travel a little bit sooner so that I could deal with this. Uh, and their lead, despite us getting all these objectives and all these kills, has held around 3k for the majority of the game. We're in a position once again where, you know, I'm hitting neutral creeps, they're not. They're going to push out this bottom wave while I'm hitting neutrals. My team is shoving out mid aggressively. Uh, this top wave is coming in. I think this is where they messed up a little bit. They got a little bit impatient. But imagine if they win this one fight at bottom, I think I didn't have buyback yet. If they win this one fight at bottom, despite the fact that their Leshrac has died 14 times, the Marana's 3 and 10, they're going to win this game. Because as soon as the lane is shoved in, it now presents them the option to get uh, pretty much Mega Creeps. This mid tower is low enough that they can backdoor it. And that's the game. And this is the benefit is that it just keeps giving them bullets to work with, you know. Uh, so we take this bottom fight. I kill their Phantom Lancer. I think this is the first time at like 40 minutes into the game where we finally feel ahead. But up at top, uh, Jimmy once again has pushed out this top wave. We do manage to find him. I think that uh, we don't get the kill. We do manage to get these kills though. And this is the best move that we made, is that we finally decided to split and do something uh, not all together. I actually messed up there. I should have used him and he would have died. But notice that he doesn't immediately TP back to base because he needs to give his team a chance to win this game still. Because this mid push is coming in. Uh, Leshrac, the best thing that Jimmy does here is that he recognizes that there is a threat to his base right now. And the best thing that he can do is go on the offensive. He TPs, in fact, to bottom. My Tuscar goes to deal with that. Uh, he goes to bottom, I go to bottom, and what his team should do right now is immediately take the fight, which is exactly what they do. This is another benefit of split pushing is that, uh, or pushing in the waves, is that it allows you to take fights uh, that are just advantageous numbers-wise. Because we're dealing with uh, Leshrac at bottom, we kill him for the 15th time, but all of a sudden my Monkey King is now going to die mid. And that was our Aegis. Once again, the game is just reset. At this point, I get travels because, you know, I'm finally thinking like a normal human being. Uh, but yeah, that is the game. We do end up eventually winning this. I don't know how important it is for you guys to just continuously watch this, but I really wanted to kind of get it into people's heads because what CCNC said was entirely correct. He said, when you focus so much on hitting neutrals, you're not getting enough on the map. You're not doing anything for your team. I have a Shadow Blade as Alina. I will catch this Leshrac jungling 100 times out of 100. If he's not shoving out the waves, I know to just get aggressive around this area. I'll even take the ward myself. I'll place a ward here, I'll place a ward near here, and I'll go and kill this Leshrac. If he dies without shoving in the wave, that death means so much, because then we can make plays around the map. We can go Roshan, we can go take a tower ourselves, but as a result of Jimmy almost exclusively focusing on pushing out the waves, I think he might have done it a little bit overboard, and it's not to say that you should never hit neutrals, because when you do shove in waves and you don't have aggressive vision like they did because of the bounty hunter, you want to default and hit the jungle camps. I think I made this video, a similar video about me playing Storm and doing this, about like five years ago, but it seems as though people still don't really do this. Uh, and this is kind of a problem. I read a lot of the Reddit comments uh, in the video, or the streamable that he made or whatever, where everyone's like, everyone does this at every level. And I was like, that is objectively not true because it still does not happen in my games. And I made a video about it five years ago and I feel like if I keep making videos about it and I keep stressing the importance of it uh, in my cast, hopefully that'll start to change. Because that's really what I shoot for in these YouTube videos. To make, uh, to make people do these things in my pub games, hopefully, and also to make like $4. Because that's probably how much I've made in my YouTube career, so. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll hopefully upload another example of this because I do think that it is one of the most prevalent things towards Dota. It has been. If I was making a video about it five years ago and it's still useful now, I hope that people are uh, paying attention. At this game, at this point, by the way, we're still we're down 4K again. <clears throat> all of a sudden, after losing the Aegis and all that. So yeah, uh, people often say, like, I only ever make a perspective video from my perspective or... Uh, from a winning side and so i wanted to kind of show you guys from a losing side and why this matters so if you have any comments uh feel free to post them in the youtube thing i'll probably read them or i won't i don't know